A wonderful person, this is Anton, and today we're going to discuss some of the recent and somewhat unexpected discoveries when it comes to a relatively established theory. The theory of relativity. Obviously, by this guy. And essentially a theory that, even though at first appeared to be kind of counterintuitive and almost difficult to believe, decades and decades later has been basically proven to be entirely correct. And specifically, in this video, we're going to be focusing on some of the very unusual new effects so-called relativistic effects, discovered in a study that just came out a few days ago, and basically talk about how this works, and especially why this matters for potential future technologies. In other words, confirming that there is actually still quite a lot to learn about relativistic effects, and even after 100 years, there are still things to discover. But specifically, we're actually focusing on effects from the theory of special relativity. The theory proposed by Einstein whose focus is entirely on trying to understand the relationship between space and time, which basically does discover quite a lot of very counterintuitive and very surprising effects, with the two biggest ones being length contraction and time dilation. And so basically here, anything that starts to travel really close to the speed of light starts to experience these unusual effects. Now normally, to make these effects somewhat visible, that something has to travel at at least one-tenth of the speed of light, because before that the effects can be neglected. But once something is moving really fast, and here we're talking about fast with respect to the observer, a lot of things will start to change. So for example, the length of the object will actually appear shorter to the observer compared to what it seems to be if observed from the same frame of reference as this moving object. Now it's actually kind of difficult to imagine, but here's a really bizarre illustration showing us how all of this might look like if there's a bunch of wheels that seems to travel and spin at a really fast velocity, approximately 90% of the speed of light. Here, all of this can be calculated using what's known as the Lorentz factor, and this is technically known as the Lorentz contraction. Although here's a much more famous illustration of all of this, in this case drawn on the wall of the University of Leiden, where Lorentz was the chair of theoretical physics. But a much more famous, and I guess a much more influential effect when it comes to modern technology is of course time dilation. The concept that the time is going to move slower for anything that moves faster. And in this case, time dilation actually does matter for us for things like, for example, GPS satellites. So here, for anything moving in space, time actually goes a little bit slower for objects moving at a really fast velocity, approximately 0.01 seconds every 12 months, and this has to be adjusted for in order to maintain consistent accuracy. Although a much more famous phenomenon, or I guess the phenomenon that also affects us here on Earth, is actually in regards to various fast-moving particles striking the upper atmosphere of the planet and producing things like, for example, muons that are only supposed to exist for a fraction of a second. And the thing is, theoretically, a lot of these particles should never reach the surface of the planet. They just don't actually live long enough. Yet we know that they do reach the planet, as in many cases, they have been detected on the surface. And so, if a cosmic ray moving at 98% of the speed of light produces a bunch of muons, instead of having 2.2 microsecond lifetime, they'll suddenly have a lifetime lasting much longer, allowing them to reach the surface. And allowing them to basically sometimes interact with particles on the surface as well. So in some sense, even though this might sound kind of far-fetched, this has been proven over and over, and this also does affect us right here on Earth. But these effects, time dilation and length contraction, have been known for a very, very long time. With additional effects like, for example, Doppler shift kind of falling into this umbrella as well. But there are some effects that have only been actually recently discovered, and especially effects when it comes to, for example, chemistry or even atomic interactions. For example, for fast-moving particles, or for even particles containing a lot of electrons, and here we're talking about electron orbitals, things like bone length, angles, vibrational frequencies, and even formation of bonds is actually all going to depend on various relativistic effects. And that's because, in some sense, here a lot of these particles, like electrons, are technically going to be approaching the speed of light as well. And so here the famous example is gold. A lot of properties of gold, including its color, are basically the result of relativity. The outer shell electrons in the typical gold atom move at approximately 60% of the speed of light. Okay, quick side note, and I guess super quick correction. They're not actually moving, and they're not actually orbiting, but surprisingly, a lot of relativistic formula apply here in the same way as if they were moving at the speed of light. And turns out these effects 
make gold gold in color. And that's because the contraction between various orbitals inside the gold atom allows it to absorb blue light instead of ultraviolet light, which it would be absorbing if it wasn't for relativity. And as a result, it appears as yellow, or basically gold, and if it wasn't for relativity, it would appear entirely white. Intriguingly, this unusual phenomenon also implies that it might be impossible to have any atom with an atomic number over 137. And that's because if we use the same formula, we actually come up with results where electrons start to violate the speed of light, which essentially suggests that relativistic chemistry provides us with a limit for how big the atoms can get. But once again, these are not new discoveries, we've actually known about them for several decades now, but turns out that there is actually something that we didn't know. And that something is discussed by Alessio Zaccone in his new study on the relativistic effects and viscosity of fluids. Because it turns out that viscosity also changes. And turns out that there is something called relativistic hydrodynamics. Something that was only recently discovered because of advances in what's known as Van Geven equation. An equation that describes the motion of particles involving random collisions in a really hot environment. Something that plays a really big role in a lot of high energy physics. So, for example, things like particle colliders, or I guess more importantly, various studies trying to find a way if we can actually create fusion on Earth. So yeah, here we're talking about the fusion reactors. And so in this new study, by relying on Einsteinian principles, and specifically principles involving the changes in momentum, this is of course the famous E equals mc square formula, the main researcher focuses on particle interaction, and specifically the dissipation of momentum, when various fluids are in motion. And that's because in the relativity theories, momentum is important when objects are moving. Because here, the Lorentz factor once again plays a very important role. With the effects actually kind of being somewhat similar to the famous time dilation and length contraction. Although here, the researcher refers to it as fluid thickening. And so basically, fast moving fluids start to physically change their viscosity. Only because viscosity depends on the kinetic energy, and the energy in this case changes due to the Lorentz factor. And so basically here, a typical viscosity of a fast moving fluid is going to be directly proportional to the loss of proper momentum, and proportional to the ordinary viscosity of the same liquid moving in classical conditions. But in this case also multiplied by the Lorentz factor. Or just to rephrase this, there is basically a dramatic relativistic change in viscosity when liquids move very fast. And there is also a cubic dependence of viscosity on temperature, which essentially means that fluids start to act very differently when they move really fast and when there is a lot of heat around them. And though here on Earth it doesn't really matter much, it starts to matter in possibly two experimental conditions. First one, as I mentioned before, is particle accelerators. Here a lot of high energy nuclear collisions will usually produce something resembling plasma, and technically it does have viscosity. But much more practically, this also affects fast moving plasmas that the researchers are trying to study for the production of energy using fusion. And so here there's a connection between relativity and high energy physics, specifically the physics of plasmas. The types of plasmas researchers are trying to produce in a lot of different fusion reactors. And turns out viscosity here might play a very important role in helping us one day find a way to extract energy through fusion instead of fission. Naturally, this is also something that needs to be understood in a context of astrophysics, because things like plasma, and here we're talking about fast-moving plasmas, is something we actually detect in a lot of different environments. For example, central black holes, here we're talking about accretion disks, various types of supernova events, various types of neutron star related events, and of course, different types of jets. Jets around stars, planets, galaxies, and so on. As a matter of fact, even plasmas around planet Earth could actually be influenced by this as well. So for example, the famous Van Allen's belts might also be influenced by this to some extent. In other words, this idea of viscosity being influenced by the velocity of the liquid may actually become a somewhat groundbreaking discovery. But exactly what this means, we obviously don't know yet. This is a completely brand new study, and there are no additional follow-ups or practical discoveries yet. But still, a really cool discovery, considering the fact that relativistic theories have been basically established for many, many years now. And so once we actually understand what's going on here, and how this potentially influences our life here on Earth, we'll come back and talk more about this in some of the future videos. 
Until then, check out some of the previous videos on similar topics in the description below. Thank you for watching, subscribe, share this with someone who loves me about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else, support this channel on Patreon by joining channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye bye.